Camp 6867 Scott Highway, Western Michigan, from our township resident. I uh, just want to cover a couple quick things. Um, again, I'm going to bring it up to the end, the Pledge of Impartiality that I've offered up to the board. Um, I have mentioned it several times, in which the first time it was submitted was September 22nd. Uh, and I was told during the meeting by you, Mr. Isley, that how could you comment on an item that you had not read, which would infer to a person that once you had read it, you would be able to make a comment. When I asked about it again at the last meeting, public hearing, uh, you did not have any remarks for it, but then after the meeting, it made a snag comment that you hadn't even read it yet. And I find that to be highly inappropriate when a resident, not someone from the outside, but a resident comes in and asks you to review something, that's one page, it's not a hundred page document, that they take very seriously, that you disregard it and treat it so rudely. Um, I also would like to enter into the record several documents, which I'll provide the board copies with. Uh, the first being um, an article from uh, the Canadian Free Press, uh, with the headline of Obama administration caught red-handed working with big wind energy lobbyists misleading American people. And the second one is from uh, the National Review by Robert Bryce uh, titled America's Worst Wind Energy Project with a subtitle of Wind Energy Proponents Admit They Need Lots of Spin to Overwhelm the Truly Informed. The third being Maine board approves lower turbine noise standards, and this is from Augusta, Maine, where they're, they're going to lower their decibel limits. And the last is from the spec.com, which says the cost of green energy is 40% higher than government estimates. And a little caption under one of the pictures says, the average Ontario residential user's annual bill, which currently stands at $1,700, will exceed $2,800 by 2015 and be over $4,100 by 2030. So I'll submit those copies to the board and I'd like to um, also express my displeasure that you specifically stated in a meeting that you were sick of hearing the same thing over and over again. And I have showed up at the last four meetings uh, with dozens of documents. Uh, one meeting I probably presented you with over 15 documents and every other meeting at least four. And I was told by Clerk Meyer that although those go in the file, they do not provide copies to each of you just as a, as a standard practice. And I asked if anyone had requested copies of anything I had submitted and no one had. So why would you request information if you're not even going to bother reading it? Thank you. Who's next? <coughs> Jermaine Jones, 9450 Berkeley Highway, Louisville, Dragon Township resident. Um, I'm going to expand on more as I didn't know she was going to bring it up. But by um, the article I have is from also from Ontario, Canada, and it's uh, dealing with the cost of green energy being 40% higher than the government estimates. And Ontario residents could end up paying some of the highest costs for electricity in the developing world because of providing wind and solar energy will cost about 40% more than government estimates. <clears throat> Rate payers should expect their electricity bills to rise by 65 percent by 2015 and 141 percent by 2030, substantially more than the current government predictions of 40 percent and 100 percent. The average residence bill, like Laura said, uh, at currently is uh, $1,700. That's average of about $140 a month, which might uh, coincide with what we have. Uh, will exceed 2800 by 2015 and over 4100 by 2030. Uh, the higher costs would erode the competitiveness of businesses in Ontario, and that's, that's true for other countries. This is just not Canada. Uh, the higher cost of electricity due to wind energy has uh, driven many businesses, many companies, 
out of many countries. They have had to, uh, they're no longer competitive with their, with their product. Bills could climb even higher because the study didn't include other potential costs, such as cost overruns, um, the cost of renewable energy um, uh, with the changes to the grid that's necessary uh, to support all the power that's put out by the turbines, and that could be the same for us. Um, and also, this has affected um, the cost that the governments uh, that they are getting to reduce their debts. Well, that sounds like uh, what we're facing in, in the uh, United States now. We need to reduce our debts, but if we're not going to get the tax benefit from these programs, then that's not going to help us out. Um, see, one of the largest hidden costs involves the distribution and uh, applies to the rate increase that the revenues uh, due to the energy conservation and also because of the cost adding to the grid. I guess that's about all, but I just I just want to point out that there's other problems that uh, this this wind turbine project, and I want you to look at all of them, um, including the future costs that this might involve for us. Somebody has to pay for the cost of adding on to the grid. Somebody has to pay. And I'm afraid that's going to be us. We're already paying all the subsidy money taken out of our taxpayer dollars to put these up. Question, Thank you. Jermaine. Jermaine, yeah. have you contacted our federal legislators concerning this issue? Yeah, we have. Yes, I have personally. Good. Do you think that's a township issue? It's a township issue? Yeah. Well, right now it is. Right now it is because we, we need to we need to look as our township, we need to look at what kind of rules and regulations that we're putting in here. Um, we need to regulate this so so we're not facing this in the future. I think it does, it begins with us. Like anything, it begins with the bottom person. And that's why they're here tonight. That's why the developers are here. They're, they're asking your permission to put them up in the first place. We need to have some type of ordinances in place. That's true. But giving them a blank slate to put these up to, so that all our future generations will suffer because of these high energy bills. We're not going to create jobs. We're going to lose jobs. We need to look at the big okay. picture and right. just okay. go you, slow. You, you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who's next? Feel free to ask me any questions you like. We've done, Jim. Uh, Kevin Martis, 10917 Wagner Road, Braga Township. Uh, I speak on behalf of interested citizens in uh, Palmyra Township tonight. Last week we heard the developers suggest that uh, perhaps the IICC has been misleading and using false information, perhaps doctored photographs. Really? Are all our pictures photoshopped? <clears throat> Scary stories. Uh, in the Township Planning Commission we see one study from the developers about noise impacts. We've heard testimony from Peter Goldberg. Of course, we've heard multiple testimonies on the other side, four to one. Misinformation, scary stories. When I was on the Planning Commission rag, I asked Mr. Gould, could you give us a list of leaseholders? And this is what he brought. He said, I promised that I wouldn't show anybody uh, who signed the leases. I promised them at their kitchen table. Of course, at the courthouse, they'd already recorded dozens and dozens. Public information. Was that misinformation? When I was on the Planning Commission rag, I asked the developers, could you tell us where the turbines are going to be located? Not until you have an ordinance. How can we know where we can put them without an ordinance? That was their turbine map. Didn't stop them from citing 84 of them with the FAA. Was that misinformation? Is that another scary story from the IICC? I asked the developers in Ragged Township, are there any complaints about noise in Huron County? Here's the list of complainants Mr. Gould reported to me. Yet, when you check the court records, you see 19 people are continuing with multi-six-figure litigation about noise in Huron County. <clears throat> this is a copy of all the photos ever received by Ragged Township from Great Lakes Wind about what turbines look like. Here's our fake ones, apparently, from the IICC. More misinformation, right? They want to give full disclosure so we can all see exactly what we're talking about, right? Misinformation. Property value studies. 
Here's their study, the home study. IICC tells a scary story about property values because the home study says there's no loss. Statistically insignificant. Well, maybe uh, if you're the anecdote, uh, it's not so insignificant. Of course, we brought six studies, all showing 25 to 40 percent loss of property value. They weren't funded by the National Renewable Energy Lab. They were independent. Misinformation, scary stories, I'm offended by that. I may be a jerk, but I'm an honest jerk, and I'm not a liar. And if Mr. Ehlert wants to challenge me again on the facts and the veracity of my claims, I hereby challenge him to a public debate. Pick the form of your choice. I'll pay, and we can discuss these issues one at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, sir. I said thank you. Oh. Thank you You're welcome. welcome. Oh, sorry, Tim. Uh, Josh Van Camp, 3883 White Road, uh, Ogden Township, and I'm uh, here to my sister. And uh, again, she's pushing my candidacy, candidacy for the Elmira Planning Commission. Uh, I just real quick want to read a letter here. You know, we've, we've heard the, the developers continue to say that they're going to do things above the board. And uh, one of the things that I come out here a couple weeks ago was the proposal for Ogden Township, where they talked about some of the turbine siting. And while uh, this doesn't specifically address Ogden, I think it kind of goes to um, where they propose some of the turbine sites. And then when you look at uh, some of the areas that are proposed for Elmira Township or the proposed project area, obviously we don't have a turbine map yet for Palmyra, but uh, uh, the Dr. Curta from uh, uh, Eastern Michigan offered some comments here that I want to read aloud. He says, the complex of forested stream corridors associated with Bear Creek, Black Creek, and the Racing River is the only place in Michigan where eight species of bats occur. These woods are home to the most northern colony of evening bats in the continent and the only one in Michigan. The evening bat is a species threat listed as threatened by the Michigan DNR. Also living along these streams is a colony of Indiana bats, the only resident mammal of Michigan that is currently listed as endangered by the federal government. Furthermore, colonies of the little brown bat and northern bat reside here as well, and both of these species are being considered for listing as endangered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Three additional species, the red, hoary, and silver-haired bats, are described as species of greatest conservation need in the DNR's wildlife action plan. Even though the site is unique in our state and important to mammalian diversity of Michigan, Exelon indicated that it will place turbines within a thousand feet or so of these woods. That bats fly many miles every night and locating turbines so close to the sensitive area will likely increase the number of bats that are killed year after year while the bats are summer residents and during the spring and fall migrations. Exelon states that their goal is to protect rare and vulnerable species, but despite the number of bats that will die and the likelihood of killing threatening and endangered species over the life of the project, Exelon is not committed to obtaining an incidental take permit from the federal government um, or for the implementation of any specific mitigation strategies. For example, it is well documented that increasing the cut-in speed of the rotors greatly decreases the number of bats that are killed, and other wind companies are pledging to adopt this measure well in advance of construction without being forced by any other governmental agency. Why should we care about bats? These are creatures that share our earth, and for that reason alone we should care. However, these mammals are also beneficial in that they consume many insects that harm our forests and crops. The evening bat, for example, eats the adult form of the corn rootworm and the spotted cucumber beetle, two of the most serious pests of soybeans and corn in the state. The annual value of bats in agriculture recently was estimated at $23 billion in the United States and $508 million in Michigan alone. So even if you're not a bat hugger, you have something to lose as more and more of these fascinating creatures are killed and the cost of your food increases. The solution, of course, is not to do away with wind power altogether. Instead, I urge the developers of the Blissfield Wind Project to do the right thing to reconsider the location of some of their turbines, apply for an incidental take permit, develop a post-construction monitoring plan, and commit to an increased cut in speed among other specific, uh, and other specific strategies to minimize the number of bats that will be killed. Sincerely, Dr. Alan Curta, um, Professor of Biology at Eastern Michigan University. Thank you, Josh. Anyone else wants to speak, please sign up.